So, I recently found out a way to create a fractal animation video with Freeview software, and I'm really excited to share what I found. So this is my early review um, after spending about, I guess, a day's worth now um, experimenting. Um, so this is an early review of Fractorium. So, I'm assuming that you already have um, the software installed, um, and so you'd have to Google Fractorium, um, assuming you know how to use Google searches, searches and what, whatnot, but once you get it installed and up and running, you're going to be introduced with this uh, interface. So this is what I found is pretty typical for um, Fractal um, image generation software, um, Manda Bulber, um, I've got a couple that I, I experiment with, um, Manda Bulber here, um, which other ones do I use? Um, J Wildfire is really cool, um, but typically um, this is an open source software, so um, you're kind of just left to experiment with the whole thing um, like a dev would as they've put all the features in place and then you experiment. So um, I'm going to walk through what I did to create um, the video um, that you saw. So um, first off, um, right away you'll notice that um, you can click use OpenCL to render. Now, um, this is astronomically important because if you click GPU or CPU, um, it's going to use your CPU to render instead of your GPU. So instead of your NVIDIA or AMD card, you're going to be using your Intel or um, AMD uh, CPU, which is going to take a lot longer for generating images, especially if you're making a video sequence, which is some thousands of uh, images um, large. So to begin with, this is going to be your animation um, um, view right here. So you've got individual um, frames. And then um, let me go ahead and open up the one I was opening if I can, or using if I can. Um, it may not let me. Okay, it looks like it's not going to, so that's all right. I'll start from scratch um, going through the process that um, I basically took. So um, the first thing you're going to be opened up to is um, a flame, which is, um, I guess, what's, uh, what's used in um, fractal animation software. But so you've got your first one, and so to get an animation sequence going, you can hit, um, you go up to file, and add copy of flame. So first thing you want to do, I experimented with with this already. So ask me how I know. Make sure your um, final resolution are the dimensions that you'd like them to be for your video. So um, once that's set, in fact, you can set all these other things here um, as your first um, template. And from there, um, you can go up here to file. Or I found Control J is a shortcut key. So then you go from there and um, you can start experimenting. Um, so you've got gamma here, um, you've got brightness, um, all these things are animatable. Um, you've got, um, you can adjust the 3D perspective that you're looking at your fractal with. Um, and so that's some pretty cool shifts here. Um, and so I, I personally like these um, messing with these properties, but um, what's really cool about Fractorium is you can go and um, adjust a lot more. Um, so it's going to take a little bit because it's having to re-render it, uh, the whole scene in front of you. Uh, but again, it's in it's in GPU. So um, Also, while you're doing an animation, I suggest using single precision because um, when I was early experimenting, I was doing double precision and it was taking upwards of four minutes. So um, so I was messing with um, these. You can change um, all these different features. They alter your fractal um, in many ways. Um, and so I made some changes here. I'll go ahead and um, add a zoom a little bit 
and then hit Control J and then all of a sudden I'm working on a new copy and so from this this is my beginning and this is the second step this is the third step so I'm gonna go ahead and change this a little bit more um, just so we see some movement in the final image um, I'll add some changes here And so it all depends on what you're wanting to see in your final image. So um, go ahead and hit Control J for a new step. So now I'm at four. Um, and so then I'm going to add a little bit of a depth blur here because I love depth blur. Um, and sometimes you can't see it as well. And then so the 3D, pers 3D perspective um, or the Z position, one of those um, will alter what is in focus more or less so um, maybe if someone knows the software better they can tell me a little bit more how that works but I found that altering those um, can give you a change of focus for your depth of field or depth blur which um, I suppose are different things so um, go ahead and add some depth I'll add a, a little bit more depth blur there um, and then I'll do a uh, I'll do a, a, yaw, a yaw 3D um, alteration and so I'll add a new one. Okay, so I've got five frames. Um, so once you're ready to um, start rendering your final animations, um, I have enough here to get started. Um, you can look at... Um, I was experimenting with these and you have to play around to figure out what you're wanting, but um, you can get a lot of uh, frames generated real quick from um, a very small amount of original uh, flame um, steps here. But you want to be careful because um, I've noticed uh, this software really gets into um, rotations um, between steps. So if you don't want people to get dizzy watching your fractal animations, you want to keep these low. Um, I do think the um, and, and again this is my um, third um, animation video that I've created um, with uh, rendered animation sequence frames so um, take my advice with a grain of salt experiment yourself um, but based on what's um, what's in the text there um, the blend frames was a good thing to um, use and I believe this checks checkbox um, doesn't matter if you click it I'm not sure you can I guess you can add some more characteristics over here but um, this was um, this will work without checking these so once you have a um, pretty good idea what you want with um, personally I think leaving the rotations off is a good plan just because it's gonna make people dizzy so I'm um, go ahead and, and do a generate your um, thumbnails and so what I have right now um, So I have a total of 65 um, generated frames. And then um, once you're ready, um, you can go in here. Um, your final sequence um, animations are going to be up here. You want to keep aspect ratio, apply param parameters to all. Um, and then you can set the quality for each picture. Um, temporal samples, I'm assuming this is the... Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what this is, but um, I believe it was helpful in the animation um, step process between images. So experiment with that yourself. Um, there's an option up here to um, make your images look better, but I noticed that was um, slowing down my final um, rendering time. So I've left that unchecked. Make sure this is enabled, super important. Um, use OpenCL is going to use your GPU to render the frames instead of your uh, CPU. So that that's the the whole point of um, why I'm sharing is um, it's super um, it, it's it's a game changer for creating fractal animation videos. Um, personally, I think PNG is a better image quality. Um, they are going to um, take up more space though. Um, 
uh, JPEGs, I think, are the um, the smallest files, but again, they're not going to be as high quality. So um, I've created uh, PNG files. So um, I don't want to start this, but um, the images that I did for um, this video were taking place in um, 0.22 seconds. Now, again, there was uh, my early experiments were getting up there in upwards of four minutes. So you have to, um, and I think the reason for that was I went into the frame and I was zooming in really far. Um, so this is already zoomed in a little bit. And uh, I think the more that you zoom in, um, the more depth blur you add. Um, and, and again, I was experimenting with the spatial filter width and the DE curve, um, DE filter max radius. Um, as well as the quality, I was I was uh, experimenting with up in the 600 range. Um, it was slowing down my renders um, per image tremendously. So from anywhere from two and a half minutes to upwards of four minutes per image. So um, to keep them small and to get a, a quick, um, a decent um, final um, video um, with enough uh, images to give you 30 frames per second or more um, um, keep those uh, settings simple so um, the frames are generated generated quickly um, and so when you're all done um, going back into that um, window make sure you set your uh, you want to save to the right folder so what I did was save um, I have my abstract folder here and I saved to a new, um, I named it something, and I chose um, the folder, and that way they're all going to go into a brand new folder. The worst, it's the worst to try and find individual images um, that are just placed in a folder that you have other stuff in. So make sure it's in its own folder, um, and you might even experiment with prefixes and suffixes. Um, so also pay attention here to uh, if you, if I add a double precision. Oh, that is not going to change anything. Um, so if you up the quality, the iterations, I'm assuming that's the amount of um, um, detail that is going to go into rendering each image. So you want to keep that low. Um, you might even try um, the default for the software is um, 60. So I did 100 because I want a little bit of quality. These are 1080p um, images. and um, Granted, it's going to be easier because your eye is only going to catch per frame for, you know, a 30th, so 30th of a second, you know, 30 frames per second. So if you have enough frames, um, it's, it's not really going to be noticeable individual images. But obviously, if you're rendering individual shots, um, you want a higher, much higher quality. You might even super sample it to get, um, you know, 4K uh, scaled down to a 1080p resolution, just to um, really uh, clamp down on the the high quality um, close-ups of uh, the details. Um, but that's good. There, you hit start, um, and then you you get your file, or your folder with all your um, individual images, um, and then you can scroll. I clicked a couple there so you can scroll through your images um, I'm on Windows so um, Microsoft Photos I think is the software allows you to zoom through what you've created um, and then what I did um, to turn this into a video I went into uh, Blender has a um, um, sequence editor and um, you can use whatever software you want, but um, this is what I'm familiar with. So you go into uh, video editing. This is Blender 2.79. This is not the latest Blender, um, later experimental Blender that some people are using these days. But so it's going to eventually um, not be anywhere close to what this looks like. But for the time being, I believe this is still a stable edition. Get on Blender.org. Um, so you can go in here and you can add image and then you select select your images you go up here and display the images press A to select all um, I happen to have a screenshot in here so you can 
uh, control click and pull out any that you don't want um, and then add image strip and it will put those images into a strip and you can play those um, and then to render those out um, you'd go to default make sure um, that is scaled all the way to high um, and then um, you're gonna have to make sure it's in a movie format here um, but anyway so um, I rendered an, a sequence and then I went into um, I use OpenShot for my final um, movie creation um, and so this is what I got um, when it was all said and done and so again this video sequence um, took Fractorium 22 seconds or yeah two minutes and 18 seconds to render and that was uh, 306 frames so um, the final video ends up being so it looks like it's that's 10 seconds but for two minutes and 18 seconds to render out 10 seconds worth of um, fractal animation video is phenomenal because I've spent literally days with my computer locked up trying to create um, some high quality looking fractal animation videos so um, anyway that's um, something I just wanted to share with people um, hope you enjoyed this